Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a funeral home. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And not only that, leave a suggestion down below. What should I make next? I would be eager to see what you guys suggest in the comments. Would you like to see another real world building like this one? Or perhaps something from a cartoon, movie, video game? Let me know down there in the comment section. I will show you how to make the entire build inside and out, including this hearse. The inside of the build is split into three rooms. We have a chapel area where the actual funeral takes place. We have an area for the wake. And lastly, we have a morgue. And if you are interested in downloading this build, do consider becoming a channel member today. If you do, you will gain access to my mini city builds world, which contains every single build that has been added to mini city thus far. Java edition only. Subjects and terms apply or something. This is the amount of space required to make the funeral home. Here are some of the materials that we will use throughout the build. And here are the rest of them. Begin by placing two bricks in a row on the ground. One, two. Then destroy three rows in the ground to the right. One, two, three. And place sea lanterns in there instead. On the end of this, place a brick and then destroy three more rows, one, two, three, and replace those blocks with sea lanterns. We then want to place a row of six bricks extending right, one, two, three, four, five, six. We then want to destroy three rows to the right, one, two, three, place red concrete powder in there instead with dark oak doors on top of the powder, six more bricks extending right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Place an additional two bricks left and right of the three doors. And then continue on by destroying three rows right of the row of six that we just placed. One, two, three. Place sea lanterns in there instead. Then place a brick on the end. Destroy three more rows to the right. One, two, three. Place sea lanterns in there instead and then place two more bricks extending right. We now want to extend backwards by 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We then want to extend across the back of the build by placing a single brick. Take three rows to the right. 1, 2, 3. Place sea lanterns in there instead. Place a brick on the end. Three more rows. One, two, three. Place sea lanterns in there instead. Place two bricks extending right. One, two. And then extend forwards by three. One, two, three. Extend right by twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then extend inwards by three. One, two, three. And then extend to the right by ten. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All being well, we should line up all the way back to where we very first started. And this will give us this shape. So this shape is rather important. What we are now going to do is place two rows of bricks. One extending from here at the back of the build all the way forwards, leaving a gap of three from the front. So 1, 2, 3 and another row all the way over here a row of bricks extending all the way forwards once again leaving a gap of one two three we then want to connect these rows of bricks together but we actually want to leave a gap lining up with this central door here we also want to place a brick here and here just like this and we also want to place a row of bricks across 
dividing this area up also. And then we want to place a doorway right here. So right in the middle of this room, just like that, that's perfect. And all in all, that will give us something that should look like this. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, it's actually a wonderful time to completely remove the entire floor inside of our building. We have all of the rooms laid out, so we might as well make all of the individual room floors as well. We are going to begin with the room on the right side of the funeral home. Place two rows of purple terracotta extending inwards from the outside of the room. Once you've done that, add an additional row of purple terracotta extending up the left and right sides of the room long ways and then fill the center of the empty space in with magenta terracotta. Perfect. We then want to focus on the middle room. We simply want to fill the entire floor space in the middle room in using red concrete powder. Lastly, the room all the way over on the left side of the build, we want to fill in with smooth stone. And lastly, lastly, we want to fill this long hallway in using red concrete powder. Next, place five rows of white concrete on top of the very first brick block that we placed. One, two, three, four, five. We then want to extend in one to the right, up one, right by two, one, two, place three black stained glass, one, two, three, and then place three white concrete, one, two, three. We can then extend down, right, and then extend all the way down, just like this. Perfect. We also want to add white concrete on top of the black glass here. Extend left, right. We may even need to add a center block, but we'll see a little bit later on. Next, we actually want to do pretty much the exact same thing over here on this right side. We want to extend this corner up by five. One, two, three, four, five. We then want to extend left, up, and then left by two. One, two. Place free glass. One, two, three. Free white concrete, one, two, three, down, and then left by one, and then extend down just like this. And we can once again add white concrete on top of the glass and maybe the center block. We might even need to add a little bit more, but for now, oh, and also just left and right like this. We may even have to add a little bit more, but we'll just have to see as we progress. So the next thing that we are going to do is place three rows of black stained glass on top of the sea lantern. So that's one, two, three, one, two, three, just like this. We're then going to fill this wall section in using white concrete. 
We then want to place polished blackstone stairs above each window. The centre block wants to face forward and the left and right blocks want to face, well, left and right like this. We then want to place dark oak trap doors flipped up in between and on the sides of the windows, like so, with a black carpet on top of each one of the upper trap doors. This achieves a really cool effect. We want to do the exact same thing over here on the right side. We want to place three rows of glass on top of the sea lanterns. We then want to fill the entire wall section in using white concrete. And then we can add our polished blackstone stairs above the windows. The centre block faces forwards and the left and right one the flare to the left and right. We then want three flipped up dark oak trap doors in between and on the sides of the windows with black carpet on top of the trap doors, just like this. Then we actually want to extend our white concrete. So starting from here, it's the fifth block, one, two, three, four, five. We want to extend and connect all the way over to the opposite side here. And we actually want to fill in the majority of this empty space that we have now created. However, we do want to add black stained glass above the doors, just like this. We should also be able to extend white concrete on top of our two outward facing bricks like this. And we should be able to extend the white concrete all the way up to the top. We may have to alter this, but we're actually about to make a structural change as well. So we want to place a row of six in the ground. Where is the block and inside? So we want to grab an insight and just inwards from these windows, not the edge of the window, but just inwards from them, we want to place a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, and insight coming in from both sides. So next to the window here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then connect together. And we actually want to remove all of the empty space in between, or, well, it's not empty space, it's grass, but we want to turn it empty and replace all of this with andensite. Then we want to grab terracotta and we want to place a row of five, one, two, three, four, five terracotta extending inwards diagonally from both of the corners of the andon side. So one, two, three, four, five. We then want to extend that row both backwards and inwards simultaneously. So backwards and inwards simultaneously, just like this. We then want to take the top inward terracotta here and we want to join together using a row of white concrete and we also want to extend to the building as well. We're then just going to fill the centre of this in either with, this is a good point actually, either with white concrete or this would actually be a good opportunity to uh, fill this in with sea lanterns or another light block. Um, either way, I don't think that you can really go too far wrong. We also want to place one, two, three black stained glass on top of these three centre white concrete blocks. Place white concrete left and right of this and white concrete on top, just like so. And then we are going to place a layer of stone slabs extending off of the sides of the tops of the terracotta pillars and we want to extend them inwards and upwards. And they should be positioned in such a way that if we connect them together in the middle, you can see there that they kind of just connect above the area that we have been working on. And if we extend all of the stone blocks that we've just used in the roof backwards so that they will just sit on top of this part of the wall at the very least. And then we add the stone slabs in between.
And this is what the roof shape for this particular part of the building will look like. We also, whilst we're here, want to add a chain hanging down from either side of the door with a lantern underneath the chain. And whilst we are just adding little details here and there, we also want to add decorated parts here, here, and here with flower pots inside of them and azure bluettes inside of the flower pots. And we want to do the exact same thing over here also. So here, and then here, and then here with parts inside, azure bluettes inside of there. Just like that, that's looking pretty cool. We also want to make a little bit of the roof. So the roof is, it, it's really, really simple to be honest, but it is split into a, a few different parts. So the main roof is going to be made using stone stairs. They extend just across the top of the row of five white concrete that we placed earlier, and they want to join to this little center roof that we've just made. They overhang the side of the building, the front of the building, the left side of the building, you guys get the idea, by one row, just like this, and they will eventually extend up and connect together at the top in a point. But, simultaneously, we also have these areas here, which we want to make the roofs out of stone slabs like this. So they extend off the sides of the bottom of the roof like this, and we extend slabs inwards and upwards until they eventually just connect together over the top of the center peak of the roof, just like this. So on the left side and also on the right side of the build as well. That's absolutely perfect. So if we take a look at this, that is looking fantastic. We can't really progress until we make the rest of the actual building. Starting with the right side of the funeral home. Extend our white concrete all the way back and on top of our brick blocks. We can then fill the center of this wall in using white concrete. We then want to add rows of white concrete on top of this wall that, and this is kind of tricky to integrate with this, so we'll have to have a solid stone block there, that slowly get shorter and shorter by one block each row until we eventually reach the very top, just like this. And we want to place our stone stairs along the side of this roof shape coming all the way up to the top and then all the way down to the bottom again. And we are going to extend these stairs one row off of the side of the building and an upside down row of stairs underneath the overhanging row. And we actually want to do the exact same thing on the opposite side of the build as well. So coming all the way over to the left side of the build now, we are going to extend the white concrete backwards and then fill this wall in using the white concrete. And then we are going to add the same rows of white concrete as we did on the opposite side. So we slowly want to shrink these rows until we forge the roof shape. And we want to place a stone block here and then stone stairs both on top of the outline of the roof but also overhanging one row as well. and upside down stairs underneath the overhanging row off of the side of the building. On the back of the build, we are first of all going to start with these sea lanterns. We want to place three rows of black glass on top of them. One, two, three. One, two, three. We then want to fill all of this wall in using white concrete. It's a little bit tricky, but if we just extend the white concrete across from the side here, and then connect down like this, and then fill this empty space in, then this will do for now. And then we can add polished blackstone stairs above each one of the windows. The center block faces forwards, the outer blocks face outwards. We then place dark oak trap doors in between and on the sides of the windows. 
and then black carpet on top of the upper trap doors. The roof will extend inwards like this and it will actually connect to this point. So first of all, this back wall here that we that we will have, we want to place a row of seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white concrete extending inwards along these bricks. Then we want to place five, one, two, three, four, five yellow stained glass pane on top of each other extend the block just one from the top left and right to form a cross like this then we are going to extend this white concrete here backwards and connect down we will extend across and connect through the glass pane and extend down to this corner we will then extend forwards and connect down to this corner as well and we will extend all the way over to the right and connect to the build. So that sounds complicated but if you actually have a look at it then we've just extended the white concrete across and we have followed the shape of the building. So I'm just going to focus on filling these areas in with white concrete. So this area on the right, don't forget the sides of the center part of the building as well here. We're going to extend these stone stairs across also and just the sides here as well. It's easy to forget about these so that's why I'm just doing it now. And then we are going to fill all of the empty space here in the back of the building in using white concrete. Now we are able to add the roof shape. The roof shape is really, really simple. We want to add rows of white concrete on top of this back row of white concrete that are one row shorter than the previous rows. And eventually these will extend all the way up and they will connect together and we will have something which should look like this. So if we place stone stairs along the sides of this with a stone slab on top and then stone stairs extending all the way down just like this connects to the side we extend the stone stairs off of the back of the build and upside down stairs underneath stone slabs just like this to form a stone block and a slab and then if this makes it easier because it sometimes does with me let's connect the top of the roof together right just left to right like this just across the width of the build like so and then you'll be able to see that this stone slab here is actually going to join the very center of the roof and then suddenly that looks a lot easier or at least i think it does so what we can now do is just extend the stairs from the middle or from the sides it doesn't really matter which way from the middle of the sides and extend inwards and across until we have filled in the entire back portion of the roof So with the bank portion of the roof complete, we can now focus on the front. 
I think that if we start with the bottom, it might be a little bit easier. All we've got to do is kind of connect both the stairs and the slabs slash stone blocks together. It's a little bit tricky and it might look a little bit messy to start with, but if we just start by extending the slabs backwards a bit and then kind of just feed in the stairs from the side, just like so, then we can start extending the slabs backwards. This block here will have to be a stone. There we go, I think that that might actually do it. So if we just extend this block all the way across, so this is the row of the roof that is just above our two little mini roofs, like this, right? And we can see that that's all sealed up here, and we just have to add some... So where would the stairs be? So the stairs would sit on top of this white concrete here, just like this, and then here, and then this would be a solid stone block and then the stairs row would once again just be above and behind this that connects together this has to be a stone block in the center and you'll you'll kind of just work this out for yourself as you start placing this like if you just start off by placing a stair and if you notice that there's like a weird gap or something then you either have to place a slab or a full full stone block to kind of like correct it but it, it's it's quite obvious wherever whenever you do it. So like this has to be a stair. And if we were to place another stair here, you can see that there would be a gap, for instance, like you can see a weird gap. So this has to be a stone. And that's that's just what I mean. So we'll extend this backwards. Um, this can be a stair. I think wherever you have the actual slab blocks, that's where the stairs, like they connect to the stairs nicely. But wherever you have the actual stone blocks, that's where you need to have a stone rather than a stair. If any of this makes sense, I'm sure that this is all much more straightforward than, uh, than I'm making it out to be. But let's extend these stairs here. And these stone blocks have to extend back here. That just slots underneath. This one here. That one would, that there doesn't have to be anything there. Slabs here, slab here. Is that all sealed up now? I think it is actually. We just have to take a quick little look just to make sure that everything looks good, and it does. And then, of course, we just have to seal up the rest of the roof just on the front, and these are just long horizontal rows of stone stairs. With the outside roof made, I actually want to head inside and work on the interior just a little bit. Like, first of all, I want to place white concrete on top of all of our brick rows that extend all the way up to the ceiling. So wherever they are, we just want to place white concrete on top of our brick rows. Wherever you have a door frame, just make sure to leave enough room. Like, you can even just add an actual door if you would like so just to like keep it marked out so a door would go here for instance here and here and then it might just be a little bit easier but we want to fill all of these walls in it's quite a high ceiling so it will take a little while
So not only do I want to build up all of the walls, but I also want to make the ceilings a little bit nicer as well. So wherever we have these stone stair ceilings, what? Stone stair ceilings, that's a tongue twister. We also want to add upside down stairs underneath as well. So we just kind of want to texture the inside of the roof like this. And it gets a little bit weird with here, but I'm thinking if we just kind of like pretend like the roof isn't a weird shape in this particular part. So I'll just use some slabs to smooth this out. If we just pretend that the roof isn't kind of like a weird shape in this part and then just fill down to here and maybe even just left and right of the windows like this, then that's actually perfect. And we can do the same thing in, well, in here as well, for example. So we can just add stones across here and place stairs here, either side of the window, the upside down stairs, and we can just do the exact same thing that we just did in the larger room. Wherever we have gaps, we can just add some stone See, I think that that just looks a lot cleaner. That's just a lot more pleasant. And we can do the exact same thing in here. This is a lot simpler as we can just add rows of stone stairs here. And if we just patch in with some with some actual stone, like we can just follow the shape of the roof so it'd be like so here, here, here. At the very top, we can just add a row of stone just to the center of the roof, and then we're going to come to the opposite side and do the same thing. I realize that it's quite dark and it might be difficult to see, but, uh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. And there we go, perfect. See, it, ju it just looks so much nicer that way. And we can come into, so this is actually a little bit more unique. So this room here, we actually have to um, alter the shape of it slightly as well. So on the left side, all the way over here, we want to count and we want to find the sixth block inwards from this corner. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, from this block, we want to place three, one, two, three bricks. And then we want to extend back one, and then we want to extend right by four. So one, two, three, four. We then want to extend forwards one, and then connect to this wall, just like this. And then we are going to add rows of white concrete on top of this. We actually want to place just two rows of white concrete, just like so. And we actually want to destroy these two center blocks. I'm just going to add some sea lanterns here just to keep the light. And then we want to add an actual ceiling in the form of polished and then site. We're actually going to build some uh, sea lanterns into the ceiling, probably right in the middle. So this is in line with this road that we just placed. So like right in the middle, right in the middle of this room will be like here, here, and like maybe here but not all of these might be appropriate. You'll see why a little bit later on because we're gonna play some stuff in this room and I don't want the lighting situation to conflict with what we have. But at the very least, like we could have like maybe just like a central light just like this and we can get rid of this uh, completely just like so. So that looks pretty good. We might have to turn that into a triple light. We'll just have to see when we start adding more stuff, but you can see that we've just shaped the room a little bit and uh, that will actually conclude the shaping of the inside of the funeral home for now. Next, come to the right side of the build and locate this brick block. We want to count to the right of this and find the seventh block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We then want to extend back by two, one, two, and place two bricks on top of each other in this position. We then want to place a brick wall on top of that and a terracotta on top of that. Then we want to come to the back corner of the build and do the same thing. So this corner, we want to extend inwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then, and then in by two. One, two. Place two bricks on top of each other with a brick wall on top and a terracotta on top of that. 
Connect the terracottas together front to back and then connect the terracottas to the side of the building. We then want to fill the middle of this in using terracotta. We then want to add brick slabs around the base of our terracotta and a row of brick slabs above and outside of the terracotta. Perfect! The next thing that we are going to do is dig directly in front of this pillar here. We want to, well, leave the andon site alone, but then we want to dig one row, place a smooth stone, and then dig six rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, and place white concrete powder in there instead. We are going to dig right of the smooth stone all the way across to the right, lining up with the building, and we then want to place smooth stone in its wake. We then want to place yellow carpet to the right of this white concrete powder. We want to place three, one, two, three, and then destroy, place a white concrete powder, one, two, three, yellow carpet, destroy, white concrete powder, one, two, three, yellow carpet, and then destroy, white concrete powder, just like this. We then want to destroy all of the empty space in between these. This will form a rectangular shape. Extend the white concrete powders forwards and then fill the middle of this in using cyan terracotta. We then want to dig from the end of this car parking space all the way over to the left and join to our Andon site. We then want to remove all of the empty space in between this will once again form a rectangular shape as we so often seem to do. And then we are going to fill this rectangular shape in using smooth stone. So next, we are going to dig to the right of our car parking spaces and line up with the inside of these bricks. And we're going to dig all the way back like this. And we actually want to... Okay, so we have to count here. Beyond this wall, we want to dig seven more rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then we can dig inwards like this and we can connect like this. So once again, believe it or not, giant rectangle, which we then want to remove all of the empty space out of. I don't know why I keep calling it empty space. We want to remove all of the grass to form an empty space. and then fill all of this in using cyan terracotta. We then want to remove three rows in front of the area that we have just removed. So one, two, three. We want to remove three rows and extend this all the way over to the center-ish of the build. And the goal is for us to line this up with here this empty space. So we then want to, from here 
to here, the empty space between the pillars, want to dig outwards and join to the edge of the grid. And this is going to be kind of like an extended road. And all of this empty space, and it is empty space, wants to get filled in using cyan terracotta. Next, we want to add a sign in front of our funeral home. So just left of this smooth stone, we will place a row of 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. White concrete in a row on the ground. And then add another row on top, just like this. Next, we are going to add a wall all the way around the funeral home. So this is, first of all, a row of bricks either side of the road that we have just placed and all the way along the outside of the grid. So we're going to cover up all of the white concrete of the grid. and then add iron bars on top. So when it comes to the actual gate, I don't know if I like this, but maybe like a brick wall extending inwards from either side like this, just into the road, looks kind of cool. I did also toy with the idea of using it just on the corners as well. It kind of like rounds out the edges a little bit. It may or may not look nicer, that's kind of like a personal opinion. But then of course we do have to place something underneath the brick wall. So that would either be the pavement or just another brick block. Next, come to the back of the building and extend the end of this road all the way across to the right and join back to this window shutter. We will then remove all of the grass block here and replace all of this empty space with smooth stone. Then we want to add a set of spruce stairs. So two here and two here with spruce trapdoors flipped up either side of the spruce stairs with a decorated pot in between the middle of them, flower pot inside, azure blower inside of the flower pot. Facing this or these facing the, which way around would it be? Are the stairs going to be facing the monument or the monument facing the stairs? Either way, we want to place two rows of terracotta just at the edge of this empty space. So we want to leave a gap of one, place two rows of terracotta on top of each other that are the same width as these stairs. And here would be like names. So on plaques, so Steve Stevenson uh, would be a solid name for somebody who might have passed away and we'll have like a flower pot with some museal bluettes. And we have uh, Alex Alexson. You guys get the idea. And we also want to do the exact same thing all the way over here on this opposite side as well. So we want to dig one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows out of the back of the funeral home, all the way across to the side, and then join forwards here. Uh, remove all of the grass. And fill all of this in with smooth stone.
Then we can add two rows of terracotta on top of each other, just like this. If we want to match the opposite side, we actually have to shave a row off of the terracotta here, and then we can place the stairs facing the terracotta wall with the spruce trap doors flipped up either side, with the decorated part in the middle, with a pot inside of it and some azure bluettes, and then of course all of our signs, whether they're serious or funny, we can just place them here, just various candles and flowers and maybe even just nothing and just pots with with flowers. If Next we are going to make a bunch of gravestones along the back here. So the way that we position these is by leaving a gap of two extending out of the back of the corner of the smooth stone area. So we leave a gap of one, two, and then destroy two rows extending back, place pods all in there instead. Stone brick stair at the end of the pods all. We then want to leave a gap of one, two, destroy two rows, place pods all in there, and then stone brick stairs just against the back wall like this. And there we have two graves. And then positioning from this is really simple. We just want to leave gaps of three. So one, it might be easier to do this with the stairs. So leave gaps of one, two, three, place a stair, one, two, three, place a stair, one, two, three, place a stair, so on and so forth, extending all the way over to the opposite side. So we are trying to line up with here. So this should line up with the other smooth stone area and then once we've done that we can then dig in front of these gravestones and we can place the pods all. And then we can place the other row of graves directly in from So with every single one of the graves, kind of similar to these plaques, uh, we will place either some candles, an item frame, or like a potted plant, and I'm, I'm kind of just going to do the same thing over and over again for these. If you want to be a bit more inventive, you can use like lanterns, you can use uh, different flowers, you can use a mixture of the two, you can place like nice wreaths and all sorts, but just for the sake of this video, like we don't want this to last forever. But a bit of variety would be nice if this is going to be a permanent fixture in your city. And um, when I do eventually move this into my city in its permanent location, um, I'll probably spend a little bit more time myself on this. But for now, uh, something like this looks really good. And um, we're also going to plant some trees. So one tree will be placed extending from the corner, one, two, three, four. So just an oak sapling grown into a tree. Hopefully it will, that's, that's okay. It won't be too ridiculously big. And then this other corner, one, two, three, four here. And then we will grow this. You know what? Those are similar sized trees. That's pretty good. I would have actually liked them a little bit smaller, but it's, it's not really a big deal. And uh, next we are going to make a hearse. I'm going to just place mine like right about here just so that you guys can see how it's made nice and easily instead of like underneath the overhang or in a car parking spot. But do feel free to place this anywhere. It would literally make sense anywhere along the grounds and even in the city as well. So step one, we are going to place a blast furnace. Either side of that polished blackstone. We then want to place a grey concrete extending back from each blackstone, and then three, one, two, three, polished blackstone extending back from each grey concrete. We then want to place another grey concrete, upside down polished blackstone stairs behind the grey concrete and connect them together at the back. We then want to place a polished blackstone on top of each one of these back corners of the hearse with a glass pane in between them. And then two glass pane, one, two, one, two, extending forwards from those polished blackstone. Place an additional blackstone in front of each one of the glass. And then we want to place a row of glass pane extending and connecting in front of these two polished blackstone with polished blackstone just in between here as well. We then want to place stone buttons on the sides of the grey concretes. And we also want to place a polished blackstone underneath the glass here, by the way. We want to have tripwire hooks placed here and here, just like so. 
with glow item frames in front of the two front polished black stone blocks. We then want to place a spruce stair here with two oak slabs behind the stair, an item frame on top of one slab with a lily of the valley inside of it, and some candles on top of the rear slab. We then want to place, when necessary, I think it'll be above the item frame and the stair here, we place a string, but then we want to place black carpet on top of pretty much everything. So wherever we can place it, just place it on top of all of our blocks. So the string, the candles, the chair, all of this. And uh, there you go. There we have a hearse and we have a little coffin in the back. Um, do feel free, you know what, maybe it'd look better if we use like trap doors or something for the base, but uh, coffins come in all shapes and sizes. So do feel free that if you make more of these do adjust them ever so slightly. Next, we are going to make the dreaded sign. So we are going to write out the words funeral home and place them on our white concrete sign. So throw down the loom, open it up, place a white banner in there with some black dye, and we are literally just going to spell this out in letters, the first of which is F. So the chief pattern, pale dexter, fess. Next would be U. So this is pale dexter, pale sinister, base. Next is N. So pale dexter, pale sinister, bent. Next is E. So chief, fess, base, and then pale dexter. Next is R. So this is the pale dexter pattern, chief, and then bend. Next is A. So we want to have the pale dexter, pale sinister, chief, fess. Next is L. So pale dexter, base. Next is H. So pale dexter, pale sinister, fess. Next is O. So pale dexter, pale sinister, chief, and base. Next is M. So we apply the inverted chevron, put white dye in there, chief indented, black dye back in, pale dexter, pale sinister, and last but not least would be E, but we already have it. So starting from the left in front of the sign, F, U, N, E, R, A, L, space, H, O, and then M, E. Perfect. Funeral home. Now, one last thing that I would highly recommend, ladies and gentlemen, but I don't want to take time up in this tutorial doing it. I would replace the grass block with lime terracotta. I just think that it looks a lot better. And these places are usually like well manicured and groomed. So it, I think that it just looks a lot better this way. Do feel free to just leave the grass block as grass block if you like. Perfectly fine, nothing wrong with that. I think that lime terracotta looks better. Just my opinion. With that final detail added, we are now able to head inside and work on the interior. The first room is going to be this room. So this is kind of like a reception room slash where you would have like a wake slash, for lack of a better word, party at the funeral. So in here, we are going to begin by placing a birch trap door in this position with birch hanging signs left and right of the trap door. We then want to place a square or more of a circle of flowering azalea leaves above everything that we have just placed. So we have a stand and a reef. Left and right of this, we want to place lecterns, leaving a gap of one, with two black concrete on top of the lecterns, and these paintings specifically perfect in front of the black concrete. We then want to place a decorated pot, flower pot inside of it, and azure bluettes extending outwards diagonally from each one of these displays, just like this. We are then going to come all the way over to this opposite corner here, leave a gap of one, and then place a sideways oak stair, oak slab next to it, and an upside down stair on the opposite side. We then want to extend the stairs and slabs forwards one row, cake on top of this back row, 
item frames in front and then bread inside of the item frame. We then want to leave a gap of one and then place two looms, one, two, extending towards the back of the room with dark oak trap doors on the sides of the looms, dark oak trap doors flipped up behind the looms, and a dark oak fence and a dark oak pressure plate in front of one side of the loom. So this is meant to be a piano of some description. Next, we are going to leave a gap of two right of the door. So one, two, and then we'll place two oak planks against this wall with two glass right of the planks. We then want to place barrels above the glass, item frames in front of the glass with potions inside of the item frames, tripwire hooks in front of the barrels and a mixture of candles on top of the barrels. So I'm going for brown and green. We also want to create an area around this. So we want to use spruce trap doors to kind of like create a small little like sectioned off area. Well, that's unfortunate. A small <laughs> sectioned off area. So if we replace those, we should be fine. So here and here, that's perfect. So. We could also just remove the floor and place oak slabs in here as well. And then, then we are going to place a brewing stand on top of one of our oak planks here and a flower pot to the right of it. Then a couple of spruce fences with, <sighs> that keeps happening. A couple of spruce fences <laughs> with green carpet on top and then we will just fix this. It might not be the best idea to use item frames or maybe spruce trap doors, but I, I just like how this looks. Well, anyway, eventually we will have just a small bar, which is what this is. And last finishing touch to add to the rooms, we're going to add a couple of end rods on top of each other in the front corners of the room with candles on top of the end rods, just like this. Um, you could add them at the back of the room as well, but I do think that that would be a lot bit cluttered. And uh, I would consider this room pretty much 100% made. Next, we are going to move into this room, which is where the funeral service itself would be held. So underneath the cross, we are going to place an oak pile and extend it left and right by two. And on top of the end planks, we will place two end rods stacked on top of each other and a candle on top of the end rods. Oak stairs in front of the left and right side here with oak planks in between, and then we will extend the planks an additional row forwards. On the wall, in between the end rods pretty much and well this wall we want to find the center here and we want to place some paintings so the one by ones specifically and it would be nice if we had both of them so there we go perfect nailed it first try next we are going to place free red wall one two three in front of the for a lack of a better term stage we then want to surround the red wall with flipped up spruce trap doors and we also want to place flipped up spruce trap doors just behind this as well with a white carpet at the end here we also want to have a lectern behind this as well with a book and quill so you can make that just ever so slightly higher if you want if you want to hide the lectern but i think that that's actually kind of perfect uh, we also want to add some seating so the seating is going to be made from inwards from the corners here we'll place a spruce stair gap spruce stair same on the opposite side in from the corner spruce stair gap spruce stair leave a gap of one and then do the same just like this and then I think it would be nice if we did have some uh, flowers as well. So the flowers will line up with the paintings and also the coffin and they will just be decorated parts with the flower pots inside of them and the azure bluettes inside of those. And um, if you want to make this room a little bit brighter, you do always have the option of doing the end rods here with the candles on top, just in the back corners of the room as well. And uh, I don't think that that's too much. I think that that's pretty cool. So heading back into the hallway, all the way to the end of the funeral home, uh, the 
First thing that we want to do before we actually head in here is kind of just decorate the outside of this room a little bit. So let's place a spruce stair either side of this door, leave a gap of one and then place another spruce stair. Decorated part next to the end stair with the usual part and azure blue inside. And then we're just going to have some paintings in between the middle of these stairs here. So I'm just going to use red wall for this. Um, I want, once again, um, <laughs> yeah, that will do actually. That that looks fantastic. Which leads us into our very last room. This is uh, the, the, the morgue? Is, is that what you would call this? This is where the dead bodies are kept. First of all, we are going to place a row of polished andesite against this left wall front to back. On top of the first andesite, a brewing stand, then a pink glass, lime glass next to it, Item frames on top of the two remaining anon sites with heavy weighted pressure plates on top of the two glasses. We then want shears in one item frame and iron sword in the other. A cauldron here against this wall. We then want to place a tripwire hook above this cauldron. And then extending out of this wall, we want to place two rows of stacked up smooth stone slabs extending out from this wall here. And then I think we have Okay, so that doesn't lead outside, that's perfect. So, behind these, we want to place a smooth stone slab here. Okay, so we want to remove these two blocks, and we want to place a solid block behind this brick. A campfire on top of said solid block, and then... I think we're going to remove this sea lantern here and place polished and insight just to match what we have here on the left. A blast furnace in front of the campfire, and then smooth stone slabs just across the top of the ceiling there and that's perfect um, we then want to place a lever here a stone button here we also want to place a light gray bed here then turning our attention to the right side of the room we want to place a polished and insight here light gray shulker box to the right and insight shulker box and insight then place and insights on top of the and insights and shulker boxes on top of the shulker boxes and smooth stone slabs above all of this. Then we have a decision to make here. So th this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove the shulker box, place a light gray bed in there instead. And here on this side, I'm going to remove that shulker box. And I, I also want to have a light gray bed, but we're going to have to suspend it first. So here, and there we go. That's perfect. So those are the drawers in which the bodies would be kept. And um, that's actually this room complete. Oh, and that's also that's that's the incinerator if you if you guys haven't worked that out. And that is this tutorial officially complete. However, this video is not over. We must now move our funeral home into our city. I think I know exactly where to put this. It's going to go right next to these suburbs. It's the perfect place for it. A little bit morbid, but hey, it's where it belongs. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you are looking for more things to make by me, check out the mini city builds playlist down below in the description for everything that you can have and will not see on the screen right now. We have city builds, video game builds, movie builds, cartoon builds, you name it, we have it. Check the playlist down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.